Hello everyone, welcome to the second lecture. This is actually the first part of our second lecture. We'll be talking about the different theories of international trade. Okay, before we discuss the theories of international trade, I would just like to present to you uh, Indian pharmaceutical industry. So Indian pharmaceutical industry is now booming. Indian pharmaceutical sector uh, accounts for about 3.1 oh, to 3.6 percent of the global pharmaceutical industry. Their exports amounted to 16.8 billion dollars in 2016 to 2017 and expected to grow to 20 billion dollars this 2020. The growth of Indian pharmaceutical industry is due to international trade, but prior uh, to its growth, other countries, especially Western industries, uh, do not want to trade with um, India um, because Prior to its membership to World Trade Organization in 2005, India mass produces pharmaceutical products, which violates uh, intellectual property rights, meaning they sell products which are patented by other nations. With this, uh, Western countries do not execute trades with them because um, they are afraid that India may uh, counterfeit their products uh, in developed markets, like, for example, the U.S. So the best that India can do is to export generic products or expired patents. In 2005, Indian companies okay, uh, stopped producing counterfeit products with uh, other countries uh, with this, of course, sorry, other countries started to execute trades with them and the result was dramatic growth to the extent that in 2004, the, sec uh, the sector exported about $24 billion. Okay, so this chapter actually has two goals uh, that... Uh, go to the heart of debate over the benefits and the cost of free trade. So the first is to review a number of theories that explain why is it beneficial for a country to engage in international trade. Uh, as we learned from what happened to uh, the Indian company, other countries such as the U.S. were afraid or was afraid to trade with them because they're afraid that India might counterfeit their product. Okay, so the uh, second goal is to explain the pattern of international trade that we observe in the world economy. With regard to the pattern of trade, we will be primarily concerned with explaining the pattern of exports and imports of goods and services between countries. First, let's take a look at mercantilism that is in the 16th century so in 16th century countries are trading under gold standard so they do imports and exports using gold and silver as their currency so it was popularized by upier European countries. So mercantilism is a nationalistic ide ideology wherein mercantilists believe that the power of a nation depends on the wealth they are holding. So with this, they advocated that countries must have a higher export than import for them to accumulate gold. Okay, so the mercantilists' uh, belief is that gold and silver, also known as specie, are the mainstay of national wealth. In other words, the more gold that the economy is holding, the richer the economy is. Okay. Next is 
The main objective of countries is wealth, prestige, and power. So to achieve such objective, countries accumulate more gold and silver by concentrating more on export than import or trade surplus. So they favored state regulation and centralization in international trade. So they basically argued that the government should mi uh, maximize exports and minimize imports to accumulate more gold. So tariffs and quotas were used by governments to make sure that more exports or export and less import will happen. Okay, so subsidies were given to local products to increase the exportability uh, of a country product. Right, next is that they viewed as a zero-sum game. In other words, okay, once gain is the loss of the other. Okay, let's talk about the price species flow mechanism. So, uh, David Hume pointed out that the inconsistencies in mercantilism in uh, 1752. So, in the long run, no country could sustain a surplus on trade because accumulation of gold and silver, we call it specie, okay, means a trade surplus would lead to an increase in uh, the money supply and therefore uh, to an increase in price and wages. So let's talk about your absolute advantage. What is absolute advantage? Absolute advantage is actually the ability of an individual or maybe a company a region or a country to produce a greater quantity of goods or service with the same quantity of input per unit of time or to produce the same quantity of a good or service per unit of time using lesser quantity of inputs. Okay, then another entity that produces the same good or service. So an entity with an absolute advantage can produce a product or service at a lower absolute cost per unit using a small number of inputs or more efficient uh, process than another uh, entity producing the same good or service. So in 1976, Adam Smith, also known as the father of modern economics, questioned the concept of mercantilism in his book, An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of Wealth of Nations, uh, saying that um, trade is not a zero-sum game. Okay, he aims to show that free trade and capitalism in general is superior to mercantilism. So countries have different advantages or absolute advantages in different types of product. Okay, so according to uh, Adam Smith, Okay, um, there is an inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth of nations and countries should specialize in the production of goods for which they have an absolute advantage and trade these goods to other countries. Okay, so countries uh, have different absolute advantages in different types of products. So in his time, Okay, uh, like for example, in his time, English should produce textile and French should produce wine. Okay, so England can get all the wines in it uh, needed by selling textile to France, and France can get all the textiles uh, it needed by selling wines. All right, let's talk about your. Uh, production possibility frontier and absolute advantage but first what is PPF or your production possibility frontier 
Okay. So assume, in our illustration, assume that uh, country C and D have 10 pesos. Country C can produce one unit of product B using one peso and a unit of product A by using two pesos. So uh, if country D can produce one unit of product A using one peso and a unit of product B by using two pesos. Okay. So, what is the conclusion? If each country were able to specialize in producing the good for which it had an absolute advantage and then trade with another country or to other country for the good of it uh, lacks, the production of both goods could be increased. Okay, Smith emphasized that tariffs and quotas should not be rest restrict or should not restrict rather international trade international trade is actually a positive sum game uh, because both countries would benefit from the trade so these are the key points of adam smith different countries can have advantages in different resources which makes countries have different advantages in production. Another is that given different advantages, it was proposed that countries should concentrate in production of goods in which it holds an absolute advantage and import products that the country is less advantageous in production. So trade between countries is therefore beneficial. So if we speak of your absolute advantage, if there is one country that does, uh, does not have an absolute advantage in the production of any product, um, will there be benefit to trade and will trade even occur? So the answer may be found in the extension of absolute advantage, which is the theory of comparative advantage. Let's take a look at the theory of comparative advantage. Okay, so using the concept of uh, Adam Smith, David Ricardo wrote a book entitled The Principles of Political Economy. So he proposed the concept of comparative advantage. Uh, David Ricardo suggested that there is a possibility that a specific country can have advantage on both products uh, produced by two countries. So the country should focus production where they are more efficient and import products where they are less efficient so trade is actually a positive sum game all countries that participate in trade realize economic gains okay all right to have a better understanding of your comparative advantage okay let's try to consider the effect of trade between two countries so let's say ghana and south korea so the production of any good, that is your output, requires resources. Of course, that is your input, such as uh, land, labor, and capital. Let's assume that Ghana and South Korea both have the same amount of resources and that uh, these resources can be used to produce either rice or cocoa. So assume further that 200 units of resources are av available in each country. Okay, there you go. So let's imagine that in Ghana, it takes 10 resources to produce one ton of cocoa and 20 resources to produce one ton of rice. Thus, Ghana pr uh, could produce 20 tons of cocoa and no rice, 10 tons of rice and no cocoa or some combination of rice and cocoa between these two extremes okay so the different combinations that ghana could produce are presented in the line gg in this figure so you can see g and g okay 
So this referred to as Ghana's production possibility uh, frontier, as we mentioned earlier, your PPF. Okay. So similarly, imagine that in South Korea, it takes 40 resources there. 40 resources to produce one ton of cocoa and 10 resources there okay to produce one ton of rice thus south korea could produce five tons of cocoa and no rice 20 tons of rice and no cocoa or some combination between these two extremes so the different combinations available to South Korea are represented in the KK line. There you go. This one and this one. Okay. In the figure, which is South Korea's PPF. Clearly, Ghana has an absolute advantage in the production of cocoa. So, meaning to say, more resources are needed to produce a ton of cocoa in South Korea than in Ghana. By the same to uh, token, South Korea has an absolute advantage in uh, the production of rice. Now, consider a situation in which neither uh, country trade with each other. All right. Uh, each country devotes half of its resources uh, to the production of rice and half uh, to the production of cocoa. So each country must consume what it produces. Ghana would be able to produce 10 tons of cocoa and 5 tons of rice. As presented in point A of the figure, Okay, point A here, point A of the figure. Uh, while South Korea will produce 2.5 tons of cocoa and 5 tons of rice. Okay, that's point B in the figure. There you go, point B in the figure. Okay, there you go. In light of Ghana's absolute advantage in the production of both goods, why should it trade with Korea or South Korea? Although Ghana has an absolute advantage in the production of both cocoa and rice, it has comparative advantage only in the production of cocoa. So Ghana can produce four times as much cocoa as south korea but only 1.5 uh, times as much rice so ghana is comparatively more efficient at producing cocoa than it is at producing rice so without trade the combined production of cocoa will be 12.5 tons that is 10 tons in ghana and 2.5 in south korea and the combined production of rice will be uh, 12.5 tons, that is uh, 7 point tons in Ghana and 5 tons in South Korea. So without trade, each country must consume what it produces. By engaging in trade, two countries can increase their combined production of rice and cocoa. And consumers in both nations can consume more of both goods. So imagine that Ghana exploits its comparative advantage in production of cocoa to increase its output from 10 tons to 15 tons. This uses up to 150 units of resources, leaving the remaining 50 units of resources in producing uh, 3.75 tons of rice. Okay, that is in point C. There you go, in point C in our figure. So meanwhile, South Korea specializes in production of rice producing 10 tons. 
So the combined output of both uh, cocoa and rice has now increased both uh, specialization. The combined uh, output was 12.5 tons of cocoa and 12.5 tons of rice. Now it is uh, 15 tons of cocoa and 13.75 tons of rice. Okay, that that is 3.75 tons in Ghana and 10 tons in South Korea. So the source of the increase in production is summarized, okay, in our table. Okay, not only is output higher, but both countries can also now benefit from trade. So if Ghana and South Korea swap okay cocoa and rice on one-to-one -one basis within uh, both countries choosing to exchange four tons of their export for four tons of their import okay both countries are able to consume more cocoa and rice than they could before specialization and trade as shown in our table so it, uh, thus if ghana exchanges four tons of cocoa with south korea for four tons of rice it is still left with 11 tons of cocoa which is one ton more uh, than it had before trade so four tons of rice it gets from south korea in exchange for its four tons of cocoa then uh, when added sorry to th uh, the 3.75 tons it now produces domestically it would live with a total of 7.75 tons of rice okay which is 0.25 of ton more than it had before specialization so similarly after uh, swapping four tons of rice with ghana south korea will still end up with six tons of rice which is more than it had before specialization in addition the four tons of cocoa it receives in exchange is 1.5 tons more than it produces before trade thus consumption of cocoa and rice can increase in both countries as a result of trade and specialization okay but you know to make it simpler when we speak of absolute uh, advantage and specialization uh, even if your or you have sorry an absolute advantage in both you need to choose specialization okay so comparative advantage arises from difference in productivity okay So, um, based on our simple model that was presented a while back, we actually had unrealistic assumptions. Why? Okay, so number one is that we have assumed a simple world in which there are only two countries and two goods. But in the real world, there are many countries and many goods. Next is that um we have assumed away transportation costs between countries another is that um we have assumed away differences in price of resources in different countries we have said nothing about maybe exchange rates uh, simply assuming that cocoa and or cocoa and rice could be swapped on a one-on-one -on -one basis okay another is that uh, we have assumed that resources can move freely from the production of one good to another within a country but in a re in reality uh, this is not always the case okay next is that okay there you go number five um 
we have assumed constant returns uh, to scale. That is, um, that specialization by Ghana or South Korea has no effect on the amount of resources required to produce one ton of cocoa or rice, but in reality, both uh, diminishing and increasing returns to specialization exist. So the amount of resources required to produce goods might decrease or increase as the nation specializes in production of that good. Okay, so specialization basically has no effect on the amount required to produce the output. But in reality, of course, it varies. Why? It's because of specialization. So, for example, 10 units can actually produce 10 or 11 or maybe 12, but you need 11 units to produce maybe 13 to 14 and so on and so forth. Okay, and then it says here, we have assumed that each country has a fixed uh, stock of resources and that free trade does not ex uh, change the efficiency with which a country uses its resources. So this uh, static assumption makes no allowances for dynamic changes in countries' stock of resources and the efficiency in which country uses its resources that might result to free trade. Okay, in our example a while back, both countries are only limited to 20 resources. Okay, that's why it's um, not realistic. Another is that, okay, we have assumed away the effect of trade on income distribution within a country. Okay. So, barter system ang assumption. There is no presence of exchange rate. Or, or exchange rate ratio. Okay, so that ends our discussion for the first part of lecture lecture two. So kindly uh, read the critical thinking exercise. Okay, and please work by pair and submit your activity to my uh, email. Okay, so our due date will be Tuesday, June 30, 2020. Okay, guys, um, I will see you on the next uh, lecture for the second part of our lecture, lecture 2. In the meantime, have a nice day. God bless you and stay safe.